that world now. Good morning and welcome to Mount Moriah Baptist Church. I have had a wonderful morning so far. I hope you have too. Glad you're with us. Please contact someone. Let them know that we're on the air this morning and uh, we will be bringing you a message, a little Christmas message today. It's, it's kind of short, okay, which I, I know I've promised that before in the past and didn't live up to it, but this, this morning I think I, think I will. Um, it's, uh, it's entitled The Meaning of Christmas, and we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to do a few announcements and then some prayers, and uh, in the meantime, I'd like for you to go to Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Okay, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. We're going to be reading through about verse 25 in just a few minutes. Uh, so so go, go ahead and get set up for that, and we'll just jump into this together. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, you have a couple more chances to pick up cookbooks uh, before we resume in-person services. Um, the, you can pick them up. Well, you could have picked them up this morning from 10 to 11, but you can also pick them up this evening from 4.30 to 6.30 uh, during our Gifts for Jesus celebration. That is tonight, again, from 4.30 to 6.30. If you have signed up for that, we look forward to having you come out uh, this evening and uh, just enjoying some great food. And uh, we're, we're doing it takeout style uh, so, uh, so as to accommodate everyone. And uh, we're, we're, we're planning on having... <laughs> A live nativity, but given the world we live in with COVID, it may not be as live as we want it to be. Uh, and I'm not trying to be funny, uh, but we, we encourage you to come out, get, get your food, and uh, just just have a, a great Sunday evening on us, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. I want to name a few people this morning. Uh, please continue to pray for Robbie Davis. Have some good news. Paul Vaughn, uh, who's been in and out of the hospital, in and out of uh, rehabilitation, helping him get stronger, he got to come home yesterday. So we praise God for that. Please continue to pray for Marie Pryor, Marcia Pace, Donna Overcash, our music director. She's having surgery coming up. Please be praying for her. Irene Haynes, Cora Thorpe, Peggy Messer, uh, Pastor Dale Gilbert, please be lifting him up in your prayers. Diana Dietrich, down in Texas, we're praying for you, sister. Uh, Joyce Price, Patricia Price, uh, Reverend Richard Forsyth. He has COVID. He's an elderly gentleman, and he really needs our prayers. Chris Lauder, be praying for him, please. Uh, Marissa Pace Bartness had back surgery this past Friday. She would appreciate your prayers. Kathy Morgan has surgery coming up on the 28th. Please be praying for her, okay? And uh, William Hill is also in the hospital with COVID. And I know there's many, many others out there uh, watching or listening or you have someone you love who, who is affected by COVID. Please know that they are being prayed for. You are being prayed for, okay? So if you will, for just a moment, let's bow our heads and let's, let's have a word of prayer together. Lord Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of our blessings, Lord Father. You are so good to us. Lord, we pray for anyone and everyone who is sick or suffering from some kind of affliction today, Lord Father. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would just bring healing. Lord Father, not just physical healing, bring emotional healing, bring spiritual healing to us, Father. We need you, Lord. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones in recent days and weeks. Give them a peace and comfort that passes all understanding. Father, we pray for those who do not know you in a real and personal way. Pray that today that you would give me a word to speak to them, Lord Father, that would direct them toward the eternal life giver, Jesus Christ. I pray for the message today. I pray that you would anoint me with your Holy Spirit and help me, Father, because I am absolutely nothing without you. Lord, I just pray for everyone who will hear this, that they will receive your word and it will impact and change their lives. We love you, Father, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. 
So thank you for being uh, with us again this morning. And I was just handed a note. We do have extras. Okay, this is a blessing. We have extras on the cookbook. And th this is a phenomenal book. I've been through it a few times. And uh, so if you would like to have a copy, we have a limited number of them. Uh, just text me, email me, or message us right here, and we will get one to you, okay? All right. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, the birth of Christ. Let's read together. I'll be reading out of the King James Version this morning. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. This is how it happened. When as his mother Mary was espoused, engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. He didn't want to make a big deal of it. He didn't want to embarrass her. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, and you can find this in Isaiah 7.14, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That should excite somebody right there. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Everybody say amen at the reading of God's word. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning about the meaning of Christmas. What is the meaning of Christmas? What's it all about? Uh, to you and I as Christians, we go, well, that's an easy question to answer. Actually, it's not. People around the world struggle with that question. In fact, people in our nation struggle with that question. Let me go even further. Christians in the church struggle with that question. People say, well, well, Christmas is about family. Uh, Christmas is about giving. It's about peace. It's about joy. It's about love. Uh, if you're in the church, you'll say, well, it's about Jesus' birthday. And, and yeah, it, all of that is part of it. But I believe the real meaning of Christmas can be found right here in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Let's look at it again. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, that's King James Four, which being translated is God with us. Emmanuel, that's a Hebrew name that means God is with us. Folks, that's the true meaning of Christmas. God is with us. Listen, God left heaven to be with us. Let that sink in for a minute. God left the splendor of heaven to be with us. The Bible says he humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. 2 Corinthians 8 9 says that even though he was rich, ruling heaven for our sakes, just for me and you, he became poor. He put on flesh that through his poverty we might be rich, inheriting heaven. Folks, I got an inheritance coming. And if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you have an inheritance coming. You know, church, when we think about Jesus and we think about the tremendous sacrifice that he made for us, and we think, well, well, the, the, the sacrifice was made on the cross. Well, actually, that's not where the sacrifice began. It didn't begin on the cross. It, it, didn't, it didn't begin with the beatings and the scourgings that he endured. It didn't start in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was betrayed by Judas. No, Jesus' sacrifice for you and me began when he left 
heaven. He gave up everything. The splendor of heaven. The glory of heaven. He gave it up. Think about that. God put himself at the complete mercy of man. Let that sink in. That's incredible. God, the creator of everything, the creator of this earth that we enjoy, the creator of man, he humbled himself, put on flesh, and put himself at the mercy of his creation. That is mind-boggling to me. As a pastor, I, I talk to people a lot about fear. And we, we do live in a fearful time right now. But uh, I found that, you know, we, we have all kinds of fears. Uh, people fear death. They, they, they fear heights. They, they, they fear all kinds of things. But I found that one of our greatest fears that most of us share is this. We fear getting old and not being able to do for ourselves or have some debilitating disease and not being able to take care of ourselves. I've even thought about that myself many, many times. I've, I've thought, I'd rather the Lord just take me home as for me to be in a situation where Tammy or my sons have to take care of me, you know, dress me, feed me, help me. I, I, I don't ever want to be in that position. I don't want to be a burden to them. And, and let's fo face it, folks, I... I we just don't want to live like that. Amen? Well, well, listen to this. That's exactly what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. God himself put on flesh, and he came to earth in a stable in Bethlehem. He voluntarily entered our world as a helpless baby. He says, I'm God, but I love my people so much. I'm going to put myself at their mercy. I'm going to be helpless. I'm going to let them take care of me so that I can be with them. The same God who created the world and everything in it, in an instant, was at its mercy. Think about that. The mouth that had spoken earth and heaven into existence was now cooing at his mother Mary, the God that was surrounded by legions of praising angels, was now surrounded by sinful human beings in a dirty, nasty, smelly barn in the Middle East. Why? All because he loves us. Hold on to that statement for a minute. All because God loves us. What do you, what do you think is the most well-known verse in the Bible. Well, what do you think it is? That even, even non-Christians know this verse. What do you think it is? Yeah, I, I'm with you. It's probably John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I'm one of those whosoevers, I hope you are too, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us. He still loves us. Listen. Some people love you because of what you do for them. Some people love you because you're attractive. Some people love you because you're wealthy. Some people love you because, well, because you're family. And they know if they don't love you, nobody else will. Uh, but listen, God loves you simply because that's who he is. God is love. He created you to love you. Listen, beloved, you've never lived a day, a minute, a second that you weren't loved by God. You say, well, well preacher, I've done a lot of bad things. I don't know if God loved Yes, God loved you even in the midst of your bad. He loves me in the midst of my sin. God loves us. He can't help himself. He loves you on your good days. He loves you on your bad days. He, he loves you even when you don't feel like you deserve to be loved. Because, listen, God's love isn't based on what you do. God's love is based upon who you are. You are his creation. It's based on who he is. He is love. I've talked to a lot of people over the years who've said, you know, Pastor, if I'm just a, if I'm just a better person, 
If I cuss less, drink less, gossip less, sin less, then God will love me more. Well, you know, if you do those things, you will be more blessed and, and you'll get closer to God and your life will probably get better. But listen to this. God can't love you any more than He already does. No matter where you're at in this life, in this world, you can be at your lowest sinful low. And God still loves you. Someone once said, you can't do anything to make God love you more and you can't do anything to make God love you less. God is love. His love for you is unconditional. And I, for one, am so grateful for that. Because let me, let me tell you something. Uh, I have a past. Do you? <laughs> and uh, sometimes my future and my present isn't even so good. But God still loves me. We call that unconditional love. Get this word, grace. God loves us with grace. And grace is what makes Christianity different from any other religion. Listen, all other religions are man trying to get to God, trying to perform for him. The, the, the Buddhists, and I'm not, I, listen, I'm not putting down any other religions. I'm not, I'm not. Uh, we're, we're to respect one another, and, and we do. But, but listen to this. The, the Buddhists, they, they follow an a eight-point or uh, eight-fold path of enlightenment, trying to, to, to get to God. Uh, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they, they follow a system of laws, trying to get to God. Muslims, they hope that their good works outweigh their bad. And if they do, then they might be able to please a, a judgmental Allah. But that's all religion is. Religion is man trying to get to God, trying to win his love. On Christmas, <laughs> I love this. On Christmas, God said, I love you so much, I'm coming to you. Beloved, that's the meaning of Christmas. That's the true meaning of Christmas. I hope that that little message spoke to somebody today. Folks, listen, if you get nothing more out of it, remember this. God loves you today. He is, listen, you are always on his mind. He is always concerned about you. We say it over and over again. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Even in your darkest time, even in your dirtiest, filthiest time, we've all been there. He said, I still love you. I won't leave you nor forsake you. Now, if you're listening this morning and you've never accepted Jesus' free gift for you, that's the wonderful thing about Christmas. <laughs> Jesus has the best gift of all. Salvation, eternal life through Him. And listen, it's not just eternal life to come. It's abundant life today. If you've never accepted Christ, I would love for you, wherever you're at, just, just bow your head, close, close your eyes, and pray this prayer with me. Lord Father, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you put on flesh, that you came to this earth to live and show us an example of how to live. You died on the cross for me to take away my sins. On the third day you arose and now you are back in heaven just awaiting your return. I believe that. Please come into my heart. Save me from my sins. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I pray this in full faith. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe that with all your heart and that's what you just prayed, then we as Christians, according to the Bible, we believe you just got saved. You are now a brother and sister of mine in Christ. Welcome to the family. And listen, thank you for spending a little bit of your morning with us today. Really do appreciate you. Uh, we invite you to uh, join us again on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook Live. And uh, next Sunday at 11 a.m. we'll be on Facebook Live again. Because of uh, COVID, we have uh, decided... Uh, 
to uh, maintain our social distancing here at the church. So we will not be having in-person services through the rest of this year. Uh, but hopefully in January, we will continue back uh, on our regular schedule. And we'll be making announcements here and uh, to you through text and email and on the church's website. In the meantime, please be back with us on Wednesday evening. And if you can't, listen to this. I hope you have a very merry Christ-filled Christmas. Love you so much. Thank you. Amen.